Today, we're going to go over so many different methods and ideas and ways to start your seeds to make it easy so you'll continue to garden. And you can do this all year, whether it's in a plastic bag, a plastic container, in a shoe box, in food containers, or red cups, or doing the two cup system. You pick what will work for you so you will garden all year and you'll be able to start your seeds anywhere and then have them in the house and then move them outside to grow beautiful, wonderful, healthy plants for you and your family. And it's just so easy. Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California. Today I'm gonna to talk briefly about starting seeds because everybody's got their own method and I've got a lot of videos on it. You know how I use the two cup system. Why do I use that? And I've been doing this for years. I made a video on it. It's because you can sit this anywhere. There are no holes in this cup, but there are holes in this one. Let's see if we can look underneath. See the holes? And it's dripping now on the floor. What you want to do is start the seeds in the method that's going to work best for you. Everybody's going to have their own way of starting seeds because it depends on how much space you have. Now here, this is sitting on my kitchen window. So I've got them going in multiple fashions. So for years, I've come up with the plastic bag method to start my seeds. It gives me 100% planting. That means I know what seeds are alive. I plant them in their pots or directly outside, and I know what is coming up. This way, I'm not waiting for seeds to come up that are no good. That is one method, but I've now switched over to the pencil box. It saves on plastic bags and it's just easier for me because I can start multiple types of seeds in one box. I've got a whole video on that, but plastic bags still work. I start them, some of them, like squash, in a container, and you know how I do this in the pencil box, where once the seed starts to germinate, I move it outside where I want or put it in a cup or a flower pot. This has been a very easy way for me to do it. Now here is one way that I may or may not do again, but it's worked. These are a variety of tomatoes that are growing, all different types. So here's some tips when using a shoebox. You got the whole shoebox lid. I just took an envelope from Junk Mail and I made the lines there. I made the four boxes where I was doing my plants. Now, this is how I know what's in there because I've got a map. Now, be sure, see that little piece of green tape there? It's on the box as well, so you can match the lid. Otherwise, you'll turn your lid around or the bottom of the shoebox, you won't remember which way is up and which way is down. It works perfect, and it's so easy to keep track of your seeds. They're start, they were started in, yes, cupcake wrappers, and what I do is with a spoon, I lift out the ones I want, and it works. It works really good. The only thing I should have done, which I didn't, was line it with tool. Now, why would I line it with tool? Because I can lift this up and then gently on a table, separate the seeds that I want, that is the young plants, and then drop it back in, in the same container. They don't even know they got moved. It works fantastic. I've been doing that. A lot of you love it, you told me. And then the other way, of course, is just using food containers. These are two containers. I covered it with fabric to give it some looks. Same thing like the two cup system, but this one does not have holes. And I just did it so I can move it around. You can put holes in it if you want, but I don't put holes in it. There's no holes in these shoe boxes. Keep that in mind. Now you're going, how in the world are you growing seeds without holes? There's no holes in this container. Because I can tip this or lift this if I accidentally water it too much. And I don't have to worry about where I sit the shoe boxes. In the beginning, I had the lids on. By having the lid on it, this way it created its own greenhouse and I left it closed. I didn't have to water it just the one time when I first planted the seeds. And then once they started to pop, I can take the lid off and sit them in the windowsill, sit them outside for the day, and it works fantastic. You're going, what is this? It's a K-cup. And yes, I have a certain tomato growing in there. And yes, you can even use K-cups. Look at that, there is a hole because the K-cup already has a hole after you take it out of your machine. So the thing is, it depends on how much you're gonna grow. If you are a farm, of course you're not gonna do it this way because this is more for a small time grower. If you're only gonna grow a few things, maybe five or six tomato plants, then the two cup system will work perfect for you because you can sit this anywhere. You can put them outside, you can put them on your balcony, you can put them on a deck, 
anywhere you want and then bring them in at night if it's too cold. You can put them in those totes I make, you know, the mini greenhouses, and I do that too, and you can leave them out there if it's not freezing. If it's 40 or below, I would say it is way too cold to leave outside. That's why you have to decide what will work for you, what method is going to be great for you. I happen to really like the tool the best because this is the easiest thing. Let's see if we can do this one-handed. I can lift this up and let's see, without damaging my special peppers growing in here. Look, roots. We now know that these can be transplanted at any time. Look, no damage, everybody's fine. And what I will do very soon is I'm gonna set these out, separate the little pepper plants. These are red peppers that are on the sweet side. In other words, they're not hot, which I absolutely love. And what's beautiful about that is when you lift it up like that, you separate the ones you want, and then you just gently put them where you want, and then you put them back in your container. Now, if you want drainage, and you're doing the two system with two food containers, recycling any type of container, you can put holes in it. Now, of course, it's easy to make holes. You can use a nail, a screwdriver, whatever you want, but I use my hot soldering iron. It can go through multiple cups at one time, makes the job easy and makes the holes so nice and clean. Here I'm doing it on paper cups. Remember, paper's not really paper. They're all lined with plastic now. But look how quickly you can get all those done instead of sitting there trying to make holes. You can make as many or as few as you want. And with plastic, it's the easiest thing. Yes, you can use a hot knitting needle or some sort of hot nail over a burner. You can heat it up. This is so quick and easy. And look how nice the holes are. Now you've got your two cup system. No holes on that one, holes on this one, and nothing is going to drip. Can't get easier than that. Plus the bottom's gonna retain some water for your seedlings. So it's a win situation. But because of the way I have it set up, I don't need to. If I, like I said, accidentally overwater it, just lift it up, tip the water out and put it back. So you step back and think what will work for you. If you've got a big greenhouse, you don't need to do it this way. You can put it in your little flats and you can start them that way or your containers, whatever way is going to work for you. You wanna make your gardening easy. Right, Kitty? Look at the mess you made on the floor. <laughs> and then you will continue to garden. That's the whole idea of all this. So look at it and decide. Yes, I've got a big mess on the floor. Look at that. It's the plants. They were dripping out. So we're going to clean the floor. Kitty wants the floor cleaned. So make sure that you plant in what will work for you. Decide how many you want to grow. Like here, you're going to have to move for a minute, Kitty. I've got some rosy bench tomatoes growing in here. And on this side, I just planted some chives. Now I'm waiting for them to come up. And I have them separated so I know. Now I've already removed some of these. They're actually here. And another one is already growing on my deck outside. So since there, I had removed them, I just went ahead and put in something else. Same thing in here. I decided to put in a squash. Look at this, I have a zucchini here and another one coming up there. Can you see that? It's just poking out. The point is I'm multitasking in these containers. Don't worry if a little bit of the roots break off because when these plants are young, they are very, very anxious to grow. And so a little bit of damage will not hurt them. This is why you can move them so easily now. You wanna make sure you don't damage the top leaves. But don't worry a little bit on the root. I've actually had lettuce removed where almost all the roots got broken off because I was growing it outside in a flower pot. I'll show you how I grow those or in a container. And they still grow because they're young and they're vigorous and they wanna grow. So think about in what method will work for you. If you're gonna keep them in the house, you definitely wanna go into a two cup system because you can put them anywhere and you never have to worry about water stains because that is a big thing. So a lot of us put our seedlings in south facing windows and sometimes you don't have one or it's not that bright or it's shaded. Let me give you a hint on how to get some of your seedlings that you already transplanted into cups growing with a little extra sunlight. Take some aluminum foil and cut it into a circle. Then fold it as you see here and cut the center out. Now you will have to make one more slit in the aluminum foil. And once you do that, you just put it around your plant. 
You will see immediately as the baby seedling is growing, if it's just going by the sun outside, you know, the rays coming through, even if it's reflective light, it will add a lot more light to your little seedling as it's in the house sitting on your windowsill. And if you compare them, look at the other one without it. You will see the difference between the lights, kind of like how I use Mardi Gras beads, but you can use it simple aluminum foil to add a little extra light for your seedling as it's starting to grow. So I hope I've given you some tips and tricks on how to get your seed started. And keep in mind, you can do this all year. So even later in the spring, later in the summer, you can still be starting seeds in whatever method that you felt comfortable using and what worked perfect for you. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. I am so excited. So I've got a zucchini there, one there. We'll see, I put one in each corner to make sure I got a lot of use out of this. What is interesting is not one pansy came up. Not one. Bachelor buttons came up. My zinnias came up. My marigolds came up. And they're still coming up. But no pansies. I'm wondering. I've tried them twice if those seeds were no good that I bought. All in all, I am still very happy with the great success on all these. And it makes it so easy. Just because we were doing in the kitchen a video, she's decided she still gets paid. Okay.